doesn't matter what the jury awards you, the insurance company is always going to pay what their cap is at most. So if the electric company has a $2 million insurance cap, then yeah, they know, okay, anything under $2 million, and the electric company doesn't have to come out of pocket for it. Welcome back to Under Oath. Where does the figure from accident settlements come from? So here's the question. You mean the money? Where does the money? How do they come no, up with the money? Yeah, well, the figure? No, no. We know where they get the money. How do they determine the amount? That's what this question is asking. A 35. So for example, a 35 year old healthy single father of six kids is driving on a two lane highway when he gets hit and killed by a big electric company service vehicle trying to pass another big vehicle. Case settles for 1.6 million, leaving money to be divided up to each kid. Another incident. Coke truck crashes into a school bus, killing eight kids. Each family is awarded $5 million. A kid loses a parent and gets $250 each. Multiple parents lose their children and get $5 million each. Listeners may wonder, how is human life valued? Okay. Here, here's, you see a billboard and it says, I got $1 million. Another billboard says, I got $5 million. What's the difference between them? And I'm going to make this pretty simple. It's pretty easy. First is how much money is available. An it's depressing. An electric it's truck, true. for example, might be under government policy, and they might only have the policy might only be a half a million dollars in comparison to a Pepsi truck, where you got the whole company, the truck, whoever owns the truck. You know, you have access to a significant larger amount, and in those scenario. People don't want to go to court because they don't want to be on the hook for fifty million. So they will settle a case for five million in comparison to the electric company that might only settle for a million. So that's how much is available. And then second, of course, there are damages. You know, the father of these people compared to a child. What a father! Fa you would think that money would be different. A child would be less than the parent because the parent is the one providing for everybody. But in certain scenarios, they're afraid that a jury will run that money too high. So that's sometimes the way that goes. But there's well, a lot of other factors. you got to watch out, too, for the ability of whoever the defendant is. Most defendants are going to have insurance. Yeah. And whatever that insurance policy is, there's going to be a, a cap to it. Meaning, it doesn't matter what the jury awards you. The insurance company is always going to pay what their cap is at most. So if the electric company has a... $2 million insurance cap, then yeah, they know, okay, anything under $2 million, and the electric company doesn't have to come out of pocket for it. You can't say that with Coke, right? No. So Coke's got billions of dollars worth of assets. Well, maybe not after doing that Oreo Coke product they put out. <laughs> they might be down a billion or two from that. That was horrific. But so like the electric company, um, you might have a problem collecting from a public utility, because a lot of times the states grant those types of companies a certain level of immunity, not complete immunity, but there's a cap on the number of dollars you can get from those entities. No such cap with respect to a defendant like Coke or Pepsi or Budweiser. Well, actually there is. Um, you're dealing with Coca-Cola actually franchises out. There are different distributors, different bottling companies. So that distributor might not you might not be able to go after the coca-cola company national company you might have to go through the local uh distributor for that because coca-cola has had uh, hundreds and hundreds of distributors uh that actually in the history had they produced different bottles different different areas different trucks and if i was coca-cola i would actually if i was smart and i was in their legal department because i'm not i i can't live off what they pay the people in their legal department <laughs> um the issue is this, I would have their company split up into separate corporations. I would never want, you know, some driver to be able to bankrupt my company for $2 billion or something like that. And a lot of companies do that, like certain companies like um, drivers, that car is a separate corporation and it ha has its separate money. Kind of like when we talked about the rides at a fair, that the rides at a fair are limited to $10,000 and that... Tilt a wheel is is its own company. It's Tilt a wheel own LLC. Two, two something. Yes. So there, you do shrink the pocket or shrink the ability to get money based on the company. So, how then do you, as an attorney, how does an attorney in general value a human life? Is it based on how much I can get from that particular defendant, or is it some other criteria? Nothing is more heartbreaking when you have somebody who's seriously injured, I mean, their whole life is screwed up 
and the total policy available is, let's say, $10,000. How many times has that happened to us? Too many. And it happens to every law firm. But I, I feel like crap because I'm just thinking to myself, wow, this is so just because somebody wasn't responsible, you know, this person's going to be damaged for the rest of their lives and there's nothing we can do. That's why when you see these billboards, it's very important. You realize these were the people who caused these accidents had big insurance policies. It's not the average guy who was driving down the road and as you go, you know, with with Pip and that's all he had. So it's not how I value life. I think everybody injured severely should be taken care of, but I can only do what's available. The policy is going to dictate how much we are able to do for somebody. Well, well I, I, when I deal with our clients in, in that kind of situation, I sort of compare myself in a way to a doctor that's coming in to give bad news. Hey, listen, there's no easy way to tell somebody they're, they've got lung cancer and they've got 8, 10, 12, 14 months left to live. That can't be an easy thing to do. And so when you're telling somebody, hey, listen, the policy that's available for your injury isn't even enough to cover your, the ambulance. your two days. You won't even cover the ambulance. At the hospital or, or, or even that low. It's, it's a All painful. we can do it's really painful. is make it less painful to the extent that we can. There's nothing you can do. There really isn't in a situation like it. You and I, what we're really disgusted about is this. In the news, we, we see it day after day after day. This guy files a lawsuit over, let's say, something like slander. He said something that upset me or hurt me. And they get a judgment of $300 million off of feelings. You can't get $300 million off my father got his head cut off on your average policy. So when we see these big judgments, most attorneys I know were disgusted by it. We're like, this is silly. This is stupid. Well, there's no, there's I think no on the slander basis, issue, fact, if you see a verdict that big, it there has to be at least some argument that the verdict is also punishment. It's not just to compensate the person for suffering the consequences of the negligence of the tort, in that case, slander. It has to be more. If they're, if they're given $300 million, it's what we call punitive damages, right? Something that forces this defendant, and probably a, a newspaper, to never consider even thinking about doing should that type of action again. Should you bankrupt a company over a feeling? It My depends. feelings yeah. Were hurt. Well, yeah, sure. We sure. don't give this money when somebody gets their leg cut off. Because the defendant you're suing when somebody gets their leg cut off isn't a multi-billion dollar media company. Or the insurance companies aren't multi-million. Come on. You and I both know there's a basic unfairness in this stuff. Of course you know, there's how some we unfairness. We things. have to navigate you know, you know, the Trump unfairness. Gets, Trump gets hit for $365 billion. You got Alex Jones. He's hit for three hundred sixty, uh, like half a billion. Gawker's hit for $180 million. I mean, come on. Let's be serious about this, people. You know, we're we're living in a world where we don't take care of people who are actually hurt. Not my feelings were hurt. Not I cried that night. You know how many nights I cry for the hell of it? Somebody did something wrong to me and I feel bad and nobody's given me a hundred million dollars over feelings. You, you all the time. You cry all the time? Yeah. Normally after talking to you. You know, <laughs> I leave the office. Craig made me cry, you know. Okay, I believe that. I, I, um, I believe that I've made you cry. I'll give you an example. Somebody oh, me stuck, making you cry? No, no. Somebody stuck something recently on the back of your truck. <laughs> Yes. Yes. And are we and, allowed to say it? Oh, you can use certain words. Oh, yeah. Can I just yeah, say, you say what it, the say it, say it? All right. So somebody as a joke, which I thought was actually kind of funny. I thought it was ridiculously I, funny, but go ahead. It, it was kind of funny, but it says on this bumper sticker that I discovered on my truck at home. By the way, I don't know how long I've been driving with it, but I had a bumper sticker that suddenly said, "I'm not gay, but my boyfriend is." Okay. <laughs> 
Which now, is kind of it now forget, it's a forget, little funny. Forget, and and we're not gonna say this was a dig at at B Gay or something like that. But for somebody who's as macho as Craig, it's very funny. It's like the same time that I believe somebody padlocked a pair of fake pink testicles to the back of your car one time. <laughs> yeah, now, I, remember, I remember that. His feelings might have been hurt. Let's say he took it seriously. Let's say somebody took a picture of it and they thought it was oh, funny. I got all I got all butt hurt about it and yes. I wanted to sue somebody. Yeah, uh-huh. and it hurt me and my wife yelled Intentional at me. Infliction and then of my emotion. wife thinks I did it. <laughs> or whatever. And I mean, somebody goes, I'm so offended. And let's say it was somebody who had a lot of money. Okay. Let's say it was, let, let's just say it was largest law firm. Let's say large, let's say largest law firm, put that bumper sticker on your car and he's got unlimited funds. And you sue him for your feelings, and they're going. So, well, well, we my want to fe- punish my, him. So my feelings, my, I, I might have been more offended had it been somebody else that yeah, had a lot of who money. Somebody actually had put money. I got gotcha. you. You'll learn this. Um, very rarely do you sue somebody who doesn't have any money. That's just because there's no lawyer. Well, I mean, that's kind of. But that brings you back to the point that you were making. Like it, it, the verdict amount and the settlement amount, a lot of times, has nothing to do with the value of the person. It has to do more with how much can I get as a result of this litigation because there are there are economic realities you can't put a price on that father of six's life 1.2 or 5 or whatever they got that's that's pennies do you think that hurts i i really do believe these big verdicts hurt people who actually are hurt because you get in front of a jury and juries now hate you because they think it's silly too there are so many jury members out there go $300 million because your feelings were hurt. Really? And I think it hurts people who are generally injured because you go in front of these juries and they don't want to be there. They hate you. They And I can't tell you and I both know how hard well, they it hate is. being there. I think they're pretty fair. Once you get once you get the six, they're going to decide the case. I, I don't think for the most part, I, I don't think they let the fact that they don't want to be there cause them to find a particular way. I disagree. They want to get out of there. They want to get out of there. You and I have sat there and we've watched them when they said, and my favorite was this one. Um, you might be here till tomorrow. And this woman goes, I ain't going to be here tomorrow. And I'm watching jury members go, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and decipher this. And they will do whatever they can to get out of the room quickly. Now, here's the problem. The people who want to get out of the room quickly aren't going to give any money. They're not going to care about your client. They just want to get out. And you would think, well, they're just going to come up with a big sum. No, it's exactly the opposite. Very rarely is a big verdict happen uh, outside of political purposes. Oh, I'm upset at the tobacco companies. I'm upset at Alex Jones. I'm upset at Gawker. I'm upset at these people. Yeah, but so that brings me it's back to the point I was making it's about the three hundred dollars, the three hundred million dollars for your quote feelings being hurt. That is very likely not the result of just what the jury determined were damages. Very likely, there was a punitive damages component to it. There probably is even a breakout. Hey, how much do you think the damage was to this person? $150,000, $200,000. What are you going to award to make sure this defendant never does this again? Well, you have to look at what the actual company has in terms of assets in order for that to be a punitive or a deterrent. In the end, it all plays out to this. The original question is this, how do we determine a figure? And the fact is this, it depends. And there's never a hard and fast rule, but we are locked in by the four corners of what's going on, the policy and the damages. That's it. 